Let's go. Let's go. Go! Go! It's the web. No surrender. No surrender. You know, you know this way. It's the web. Hello and welcome to MMA Uncaged and uh, it's about time that we got sport back and uh, thank goodness for Dana White and the UFC. We got UFC 249, Jacksonville, Florida, Gareth, Soldier Boy, McClellan, MMA Royalty joins me. Um, Gareth, it's been weird, hasn't it? I mean, we're so used to UFC, fight night, all happening all the time and all of a sudden we had two months of nothing and then 249 came back. It was a bit eerie because you could hear everything, but it was a pretty damn good event. It was good to have MMA back and good to have sport back, wasn't it? Yeah, look, I think that was the thing I was going to say first is that, you know, you, we're so spoiled for choice across so many various codes that there's always great sports on. So you could pick something up, you know. Now we haven't had anything. And I think there's a lot of men out there that mm. potentially – have thought about uh, noosing themselves at the fact that they can't, uh, <laughs> they can't get to watch something. And then, you know, UFC, hats off to them, uh, pulling it off. I think it was, uh, it was different. It was mm. very different. It, it, it just had a, it, it felt in slow motion. You know, no crowd just really slows everything down. Um, and, I mean, how's the noises coming off some of those punches and kicks? Unreal. And I mean, uh, Daniel Cormier saying, listen to the breathing, listen to the breathing the whole time. You know what I mean? Like, it was just, a, it was just bizarre. You know, the walkout songs, you know, and then you look around, there's no one there. It was just crazy. But um, I think for the sake of getting sport back and getting the momentum back, it was such a, an, an uplifting event just to get the ball rolling again, man. Yeah, I think it uh, for 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 a lot of people just to have something to look forward to, and uh, and the show was good. It was a good show. I think there were good fights on it that really made it uh, made it very entertaining to watch and worth it. I mean, you know, if you were, wasn't a really good, if it wasn't a really good card and there weren't great fights on it, it potentially could have been a disaster. But because of the quality of the guys and the way that they performed. You know, you've got a really good show. And I think uh, everybody's excited about watching on, on Wednesday. There's another one. It's like Daniel uh, Cormier said, uh, let's fast forward to Wednesday. As soon as the event yeah, ended, really. let's fast forward to Wednesday. But it will be interesting. I think before we get into the, the UFC uh, 249 fight card, I mean, it's a bizarre, unprecedented time we face at the moment for fighters, for people involved in the fight sport. Well, I mean, what, what would uh, you, you, you can be grateful because you've got a full time job, right? So it, it certainly helps a lot in terms of you being able to pursue your fighting. But what if you didn't have that? What would you be doing now as, as, a, as a fighter? Can you put yourself in someone's shoes who's not fighting at the moment? Yeah, look, I'm super blessed to be in my family business and it takes a lot of pressure off it. It does, it really does. But I mean, it's something I've given a lot of thought to. And how would I respond? You know, fighters, sponsorships, um, fights, that's kind of what, what makes them tick. And at the moment, they've got nothing. Um, and a lot of people out there are cutting back on everything because it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough time and you need to make sure that you can look after yourself. So, which put, puts fighters in a very unfortunate position. Um, yeah, look, as much online stuff as I possibly could, potentially coaching, um, you know, whatever I could come up with and think about. Um, yeah, and then, uh, and then really trying to just keep myself as, as, as fit as I can mm. so that as soon as we're out, I could put my hand up and go straight away. Um, I think would have to be the plan um, yeah. to make sure that you could survive. Um, yeah, and then, you know, can I make it work? Can I, can I get in there, get a win and be successful at it, you know? Um, winning make sure at the end of the day that you, you're making the money so 100%. I don't know so a, a really just one of those those questions you can't answer how do you answer yeah. it you know what do you say you, everybody's different everybody's got a, a different story or scenario but I think that that's one thing about us that's uh, you know we are fighters and we, we're not afraid to do what we need to do to get to get ourselves going forward so yeah. 
Yeah, I think I would I would be coming out, maybe probably as a heavyweight. Guns. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, good luck with that one because there's some scary <laughs> dudes at every weight, man. Um, I, I mean, the fact of the matter is you're not sparring, you're not rolling, you know, that fitness side and conditioning side is, it's not there. So, you know, it's, you're going to have to look to finish early doors, man. <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to be a long yeah, time. Yeah, no, one minute fight. <laughs> one minute fight. That's what you've got to think in your head, one minute fights. I have to, I um, have to. Yeah, look, I mean, it would be a very difficult uh, scenario and I think it would go a bit, basically go down to an experience thing and what yeah. I have in my pockets and then just rely 100% on that and throw 100%. the coin. You know what I mean? That's you don't have it. to toss it and see what happens. Yeah. All right. Well, UFC 249 wasn't quite the fight island, I suppose, that uh, Dana was getting us all excited about. Um, but it went ahead. And let's start with the prelims because, I mean, you still had some cracking fights on the prelims. I mean, uh, if, you, if you look at... Um, what people have been talking about, I mean, it really delivered because I think, as you say, there was a potential threat in that these fights wouldn't deliver, but, but they certainly did deliver. Any particular fight catch your eye on the, on the, on the prelims? The undercard? I think the first one, um, the first one, um, Ryan Spann and uh, Sam Harvey was, uh, was an absolute cracker. Um, no fear in either of those boys. They, they really just, I think, set the tone. They came out, they did their job, they gave everything possible of themselves. Um, I like Sam Alvey, I've met him a few times. Um, he's been on a few cards with me um, when I fought, and uh, good guy. Um, and a gamer, full on gamer. There's, um, <laughs> there's nothing, uh, nothing shy about him. So I think they really set the tone. Um, Pedersen Donald Cerrone fight was also just different guy, Donald Cerrone. Yeah, like super, just not the same guy. When he fights like that, he's he's a scary dude. When he doesn't think about what's got to happen and he doesn't over process it, he just comes out and he's just got these these. I just I don't know. He just throws and he's and he's just throwing and he's moving and he's hitting and he's coming and he the pressure doesn't stop at any stage. Yeah. Um, let us see, we know what quality of a striker is, or yeah. what he is, um, you know, so there's nothing, sh he was a champion. Yeah. I mean, the guy that is not, he's no bum himself. So it made for a good fight. Mm. Was it a unanimous decision? Uh, I don't know. Maybe splits. Do I think it went to uh, Pettis' way? Maybe not. Uh, you know, but ma maybe I was being biased. You know, yeah. like I said, it's very difficult when you're looking at a fight that close because it just really, really boils down to your own personal opinion. I, I mean, where does this leave Cowboy Cerrone? Because, I mean, Conor McGregor kind of schooled him a little bit in a way. I mean, he didn't expect those sneaky uh, shoulder bumps, if you like, and, and it kind of just threw him completely off his game. He's a crowd favorite. I mean, any guy who drinks beer out of his boot is just a legend anyway. Um, yeah. But where does this yeah. leave Cowboy yeah. Cerrone uh, in terms of the big picture? Because he still draws people. He still puts bums on seats. Um, but where does this leave him now, in your opinion? No, listen, I don't think... Uh, I, don't, I think he was unlucky. I don't think that uh, him losing was a show of whether he's... You can see he's still got it. He's, I mean, Anthony Pettis is still a, a top... I think Pettis is top 10 now in the world. Um, top 10 level is... Hey, for Donald Cerrone to still be in the top 10 after this many years and this many fights is an unbelievable thing. Yeah, it really is. It's a testament to what to what a good fighter he is. Yeah, and look, I mean, he, he has days. No fighter is perfect in the head all the time. They, it's a it's a very special breed of fighter that can stay that. I'm a, a Khabib, John yeah. Jones. That's what I'm talking about. Those are the guys that are just when they step in there are invincible. Um, you know, but everybody has their day where they're just not switched on. They just yeah. don't. Uh, they don't feel right. They're not comfortable. Uh, they're not comfortable with the surroundings. Uh, there's a lot of factors that go into that. And I don't think a lot of people understand as a fighter. And the smallest thing can switch you off. Yeah. The smallest thing. You know, you can be mentally the best prepared. You can be physically in the best shape of your life. You can be have the best confidence in yourself going in there. And all of a sudden, one small thing and it's gone. And you can't get it back. 
yeah. and yeah. you become so obsessive of trying to switch yourself back on that you forget about what you got to do. Mm-hmm. So, look, it can happen to anybody. Um, I think he's a, he's a guy that loves to fight. He jumps out of a plane's throws himself around a motorbike, horseback I mean, ride. He's, he's a proper he's a proper cowboy. Yeah, full on. Full on action okay. boy. Not Let me ask you this. He's definitely one of the guys you would have around the dinner table if you could pick three or four UFC fighters or fighters from whenever. Don, Donald Cowboy Cerrone is one of the guys you will want around. Yeah, he's the, the guy table. you want at the table. He's the guy you want at the table. Yeah, 100%. crazy, st- crazy stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. yeah, yeah. Um, but you're right. I mean, uh, what a servant to the game, if I can put it that way. Anthony Pettis, also a proper gamer, never backs down from a fight. The 29 28, well, as I say, it's down to interpretation. And that's something we will get down to as we, you know, continue with MMA Uncaged because. You know, it might be good to get a, a referee on and, and talk about that. I mean, one comes to mind, a good friend of ours who we could have on and Justin Ferrier and just get sort of the, the inside, you know, how you qualify because it's not easy. You've got to put everything aside, but it does have a certain amount of interpretation. It really does. And at the end of that, sometimes yeah. that costs people fight purses. You know what I mean? Records, the O's got to go, you know, those sort of things. You know, look, it's so, it's such a, that's, so I always say it's such an unforgiving sport because it it just cannot be your night. I mean, I was experienced one of those. I was in, in Canada, um, 100% the, myself against Alyssa Deterio, and we threw, each, we threw everything we possibly could throw at each other to win the fight. I was convinced that I had done enough. He was convinced that he had done enough, and he ended up eking it. And mm. you, you kind of like, well... Why didn't it go my way? Why is it that I I didn't get that win? Um, and uh, it's difficult. It's not an easy thing to 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 understand, um, you know. But it's part of the game, and it's what we we have to live with. We know that going in there, that the reality is don't leave it to the judges. Yeah, you know that. That's all. It's, it's rule number one, and you fight as hard as you can to make sure that that doesn't happen. And if it does. You better make sure that you were convincing enough uh, to to win it. There must be clear no doubt. There must be no doubt when it comes but to the judges. One guy that that made it very clear that, uh, that he didn't need the judges was Francis Naganu. I mean, on the main card, the guy from Cameroon is just and he's he's a scary, scary dude. Like I, I feel so sorry for for his Yarzino Rosenstreich. He just I mean, he's the first guy that's come from his country to fight in the UFC, and he comes up against who is a monster in that division. No, listen, listen, he's no joke, uh, that cat. That guy yeah. can bang. Serious, serious dude. When I tell you he's, he can operate, he's a, he's not, he's a six-rate uh, heavyweight in the world. He's ranked number six in the world. He's not, <laughs> he's not a joke. No. And then Garnier, who? No, it's, There's not a man alive on this planet that wants to stand in front of that guy. That guy is the perfect. He, he's six foot five. He's chiseled, I know. and he, he can he. Did you? My favorite part about the whole thing was, is how polite he was afterwards when he was doing his interview. <laughs> yeah, he said to this guy, "He's just got to get better. He's got to step back, and then he's got to come back. He's not ready." But I mean, it was what eighteen <laughs> seconds or something like that, and it was good night, you nurse. Yeah, I'll say yeah, say James. Yeah, it was awesome. It is awesome I to watch. Just, no, I say James. Say James. Death, death. With um, and he throws with. I, I I don't know what he throws with. <laughs> you bus, just don't want to be hit by bricks. Say James. No, it's not. Yeah. It's, and and I think Joe Rogan said it best. It's not bad intentions. It's evil intentions that he throws. Yeah, no, it's, evil it's, it's intentions. Death. It's it's death. There's death. That's why I say to you, it's like when he got, when he went, he was yeah. just, he was, he just wanted to kill. That was it. And he, he mauled him on the floor with about five or six uppercuts before yeah. the ref could even close a meter <laughs> down. That's how quick he hit him. And then but, afterwards, he's so like, ah. Oh, I just yeah. want to thank everybody. Right. No, I mean, uh, that's, no, a, no. that's a that's a killer. Most people would be decapitated by after a shot from that. That's I would sure. never want to be hit like that in my life ever. Definitely um, not. So, 
let's Nagano is now what four fight winning streak, right? That that is that is that where he's tearing it up at the moment? I mean, this guy is just he's just and for African MMA for the continent, it's just so exciting to watch this guy in action. But I mean, in so, your opinion, is he? I mean, he's the legit. Like he's the guy. So he's for me definitely, uh, definitely, definitely putting his hand up for a title fight. Mm. Definitely, he's well. He must be next. Yeah. Um, he uh, he rampaged all his his way there. Then lost to uh, now champ uh, Stephen Mojic. Mm. Um, now all of a sudden four fight win streak, but savagely. I mean, thirty seconds, seventeen seconds, no. twenty seconds, a minute, just murking amazing fighters to putting them away and I, the way that I see it is if that it goes two ways here if, if a Stipe and uh, um, DC will definitely fight um, and yeah. I, I see yeah. DC edging him I think DC will wrestle him a lot more than he did before yeah. um, I don't think he's going to strike as much as what he did as what, he's, what he does or what he did previously um, I think if he wrestles Stipe, Stipe is going to have a hard time. Um, I think Stipe is a good wrestler, but I don't think he's as good as what DC is. Um, so then does DC retire? And then it become a, a, a match for Francis against the next guy or Stipe again. Um, if Stipe wins and beats DC, then you 100% uh, bet your bottom dollar is fighting uh, Francis Ngannou, eh? And uh, I think Francis is improved in his wrestling. That's how Steve Bay beat him last time. Just took him down yeah. and stayed on top of him. He didn't want to get hit by that. And I, no I think I think we're going. He will be uh, our next champion from uh, from Africa. Yeah. Um, and that's three African champions in the mix. That's uh, it's a good showing for us. Yeah. I think so, I think Africa is the next breeding ground for world class fighters. Um, so let's see. Uh, wow, you know, no, a guy man. like that, he's exciting. He's he's seen probably a lot more than most of us have seen in terms of living in Cameroon and the war and stuff like that. So, you know, I think he's going to be hard to stop. He knows what he wants and he's willing to destroy everything that stands in front of him. Badass, yeah. Man. Um, all right, uh, let's move along. Um, Obviously, Sudo and uh, Dominic Cruz, a lot of people got excited about because Cruz hasn't fought in a long time. I enjoy him on the commentary. I think his analysis is outstanding. He's also a proper gamer with a proper record. Um, but Sudo, I mean, firstly, what is your take on the stoppage? And, um, you know, just, just uh, Henry Sudo also retiring, sort of caught people by surprise, I think. Well... There's been some serious allegations put out by um, Dominic Cruz on the ref saying he smelt of alcohol, and you know that's quite a that's quite a that's that's quite a big statement from a very respected person within the industry. And uh, if that's true, how does that play out? I don't know. Look, that could be quite a quite a big thing. Obviously, um, they will. UFC will do their best to make sure we don't find out about it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, look, Peter, um, Cruz is a, he's a phenomenal fighter. He's mm. proven that time and time again. His uh, his ability to win and be champion is uh, proven. Henry Cejudo just he's just he, like like they said, he's just built to win. He's a winner. He doesn't, he doesn't know how to do anything else. I mean, if you look at his pedigree, and they were talking about it, it the guy's been winning since he was a, a, a junior um, in school. Yeah. So if you, it, it becomes a habit. Winning becomes a habit. If you breed that, that mentality and it's an every and all the time thing, mm. you don't know how to lose. So yeah. your mind is majority of what plays the tricks. The skill level is very different uh, at that at that at, at that top ten level. You're very close. It's inches. It's not nothing more. It's just the guy who's better prepared and, and whose brain is switched on on the night. Yeah. Um, that 
that gets you into how many of those fights is it either an incredible knockout or it's an incredibly close fight. Sometimes it's, it's a case of uh, literally getting your head in the wrong place. I mean, with the knee, because that sent him back. It cert- that, that rocked him. He just got his head in the wrong place. Bang. And that was it. You know what I mean? I, I, I know he says like uh, he was getting to his feet and he wasn't going down, but it looked like he took at least 11, 12 shots before the ref so, so the thing is what I the way that I see it was I think the ref was watching because he he was he gave it time. Um I think he did take quite a bit off to it, but then he started to move his head in different mm-hmm. angles and, and there was a few that started to miss mm-hmm. and then he started to get up. So I think the ref had made a decision to stop it, but it was just that fraction too late. Yeah. He he intervened to that fraction too late when there was a recovery happening. And in that case once the recovery starts, you've you've got to let it play out there. Yeah. So, exactly. again, fine lines, refs, uh, judges, the, you know, it's split-second decision-making that changes a lot. And, again, the opinion of somebody else. It's my opinion to what I saw. Somebody yeah. saw it differently and said, well, he had dropped him. He had already put a lot of hurt on him. They should have stopped the fight for the safety of the fighter. That would have been the... You know, the other argument. Yeah. So, look, it's how you feel about it. Um, my opinion, I think possibly once he had started to regain his momentum and stand up, he should have let it go. Um, and I think Dominic Cruz was only starting to get better. He was starting yeah. to find himself, starting to find his range. Yeah. Um, he was moving. You know, I, I don't think Henry Sudo was having it all his own way. No. So, Hudo looked good. He yeah. looked exceptionally good. Um He's a beast. He is. He's got a killer instinct. Once he rocked him, he was on him in a flash. Yeah. But that's also the difference between someone who has been fighting regularly, winning titles, defending titles, and someone who's been calling fights for three years, you know, in Dominic Cruz. So, as you say, finding rhythm, finding that sort of muscle memory yeah. again. And, and I think Cruz won't retire. I think he'll be keen to get that as, uh, as I was... Well, I think if Cejudo's out the picture now... You know, there's definitely going to be a few lot of guys. And he, he then has an argument. If Cejudo's gone, Dominic Cruz has the argument to say, well, you know, I, I got treated unfairly in that fight. Mm. I want to be the guy that's going to fight for the title next again. Yeah, and exactly. uh, if, it's, if, if he's not around, if the champion's not around. Yeah. Um, what's it? The black look, I mean, and gold it was jacket, eh? Uh, it was the interesting what... <laughs> It's, it was interesting what DC said about Cejudo and that how he, he quit wrestling and he had said that if he wasn't going to get paid enough, he was going to leave. So that was potentially his, uh, his way of saying to the UFC, well, look, if you don't respect me and give me the money I deserve, I'm out. Yeah. And he has every right. He has every right to say, hey, you need to pay me better because not only am I a champion, I'm proven. I've, I, I'm, look, he definitely 100% has the right. I mean, I would say there's an argument to it, but he, to call himself the greatest combat uh, sportsman of our generation, yep. 100%. That's what I say. Gold medalist. And, I mean, at the end of the day, he's got two, two uh, weight divisions. He's king of, of them both. You know what I'm saying? So... I, I still wonder if we'll see Saudo again, but um, what an athlete, man. What an athlete. Let's uh, move on. Obviously, main event. I think a lot of people put money on Tony Ferguson. There's one fight I do want to talk about. Sure, and, sure. Uh, yeah, that was uh, um, the one just before Francis and Garnier, uh, Calvin Kutka and uh, uh, Jeremy Stevens. Oh, that was a barn burner. That was awesome. Yeah, so... Stevens came out like a just could just see you can see the guys just had so many fights in the UFC <laughs> didn't care didn't worry about no noise was just a full on gamer like yeah. let's go and he he was intense off his leg kicks in the beginning were deadly he was throwing great combinations um, and he was just putting the heat on for that first that first round uh, first say three or minutes of that round of the first round, he would just put the heat on, on that Colvin, uh, uh, and Colvin 
responded in the most unbelievable way. What yeah. one of the best striking displays I've ever seen in my life. Just up high, down low, ripping the body, throwing good hard low kicks. Every time that he responded with a combination, he would pump him three or four yeah. times. Shot behind the right hand, like, and su- just like, super calm. Like, he had this just really flowy, natural style about himself and didn't feel under pressure at any stage. Like, that's the experience. That's the mentality of a, a, a really good fighter that's going to be a serious contender. That took him from, from nine to seven on the rankings. Definitely put his hand up to say, hey, I want to crack at somebody with that in the top three. Um, and don't be surprised if he's not headlining a card very soon in a, in a, in a high-profile fight. Definitely. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Biggest win of his career to date for, for, for Qatar. And, definitely, Qatar. And the way that he did it, he just the way that he constructed his, his game, he, he, he stayed super basic in his approach, but his hands were unbelievable. His, his, his kicks, he threw kicks well off the back of them, led with good kicks. Mm-hmm. His body shots were, oh, they, I mean, if you, if you want to throw a body shot, that's how you throw it. Um, and then I think once he got him, he, he started to tag him and really started to uh, slow him down with those, those body, that elbow was just, oh, honey. Uh, <laughs> he, did, he did get a nice broken nose for his efforts, though. Did you see that? Oh, but that elbow was insane. It was insane. Oh, perfect. Perfect timing. Just pop on the chin. Good night. That's why, that's why I say this event was under pressure to deliver. And it did exactly that. It delivered. Yeah. So it gave it had, fight it fans a bit of fight. everything. Yeah. yeah, it had every fight, every yeah. scenario, every bit of yeah. politics in it. It was yeah, like, oh, talk off. Off. what about this? And so it, it makes UFC relevant again in everything that they've done. Probably had a, a huge captive audience, probably their biggest audience ever, because what else is on? Must be. Must be. Um, we're, running out of, we're running out of time, so let's get on to our uh, main fight. I mean, I think it's fair to say after winning 12 in a row, Tony Ferguson was the type of guy that most people would have put money on, right? Yeah, yeah, but remember what I said to you in the beginning. The environment changed, changed and he didn't look like the Tony Ferguson of, of thing. Don't get me wrong, his performance was unbelievable and... His chin is next level, but he didn't have that, that just that he, he, he has this, it's almost like a possession. He goes, gets possessed inside there. He yeah. throws everything that he can. He's just moves in this weird way and with this intensity. His cardio and his, the way he, where he's able to push his body um, and his mind is, is next level. Yeah. I mean, they, that's why they call him the boogeyman. There's yeah, the reason why they call him a boogeyman. Um, but he didn't have that energy. So he kind of looked, oh, okay, it's a sparring match. But, but that's what it looked like to me mm. in the beginning. Um, and he didn't have that kill. I want to kill you. Mm. Like in, in before, Justin Gaethje was just, Wow. I, yeah. the rest, I, I've watched a lot of good strikers in my life. Um, that was one of the best kickboxing performances I've ever seen. He, he, beat, he beat his legs up with yeah. savage leg kicks. And then just some of the best boxing I've ever seen by anybody. He's slipping, his head movement offline, when he put himself offline, how he threw the combinations – that that lead hook, I yeah. I've never uh, every time, every time yeah. he, he, he didn't miss it often, and they were snappy and violent. I mean, I can't believe that a, that some that somebody could take punches like that continuously. Yeah. Not not just not just oh okay he took three or four big ones. <laughs> he took about forty or fifty big ones. Yeah, from round one. I mean, one. there was at least yeah, there was at least ten around. Yeah. Crackers. I mean, the right hand, 
just set up. He set it up every time. He either counts it beautifully with it, whoop bang, or he would lead amazing with it. I mean, Justin Gaethje probably is, yeah, yeah. Uh, he did. He didn't. He didn't do himself any harm. And it's not like he threw a, an amazing amount of jabs either. There was there were strikes that were landing and they were finding their targets. And Tony Ferguson, I mean, at the end when he was shaking his head, you're like, whoa, he, this guy is in a world of hurt. Hook, hook, right hand, right hand, hook. Um, and funny enough, the punch that hurt him was a jab. Actually, a jab. You're right. It was a yeah, jab, it and was. it was a, it was a money. But he's just his range. He yeah. he trusts his. He trusts his ability to uh, to wrestle because he has incredible credentials in terms of the wrestling side. So he's like, oh, well, take me down. Um, he's not afraid to scrap and make it dirty. Yeah. Like, he could quite easily have gone into that world with uh, the boogeyman. But when you go into the boogeyman's world, you mm -hmm. you better make sure you, you're you ready. Right. Um, and he just stayed simple, perfect, and he did what – one of the best performances I've ever seen in a title fight. It was so composed, wasn't it? I mean, and, and like he said, post-fight, he said, in the past, I've had fun and I've got complacent, uh, complacent and that's where I've uh, lost. This time, you could see it was laser-like focus. He had the game plan focus. and he absolutely dominated. And, I mean, Khabib Nurmagomedov tweeted something about no comments. I mean, how do you see that playing out? Because Khabib is, is a beast. He's, uh, he's another level. What, oh, uh, tell me more. I'm happy. Uh, that's a second place fight. That's one of the best second place fights I've ever seen in my life. I'm happy for that. Now, we got treated to an exceptional d display of MMA. Um, surprisingly, the Tony didn't try and take him down or uh, shoot yeah. for a leg or something. Get him, put him on the floor and uh, let's see the ground game work on him. Um, he, tr he wanted to strike. I, I think he wanted to prove a point potentially. Um, but yeah, I mean, against a guy who strikes like that, it's, it's very difficult. Uh, I, I don't think that it, I still, to the, even though Justin uh, did what he did against to Tony, I don't see anybody coming close to, to Khabib. What Khabib does well, there's there's not really much answer for it. No. And uh, just, it will be interesting to see how does Justin get these wrestling uh, wrestling match up to that that standard of ground game. Yeah. The thing is, Khabib can does not only can he wrestle, he can grapple, That's... and he can submit you anywhere. That's the problem. That's the problem. And no, he can also beat though. you up and take your soul. No, he's, he, he's a soul taker. <laughs> he's a, and the worst is when he talks to you about it. So, look, interesting <laughs> part. I think, I think Justin Gaethje, I, I think he said no comment because I think he re, uh, Khabib was like, okay, 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 you, you, you can fight because he can. Don't, don't underestimate anybody. That's one thing you never do. You don't ever, ever, ever underestimate anybody. Yeah. If Justin Gaethje can keep it on the feet, he 100% is within, he's in with a shot. Uh, there's no shadow of a doubt. Uh, Khabib's striking is, is, well, listen. Khabib took Conor McGregor and popped him on the chin and put him on his bum. Yeah. So, like, again, then you just go, well, okay. He's the destroyer of souls, man. He's the <laughs> destroyer of souls. You think uh, you have the answer. It's like a no. Floyd Mayweather. You think you have the answer, but yeah. you just don't. Yeah. So, yeah. interesting. Yeah. Card was great. Loved every second of it. In fact, it's one of the first times I've sat down and stayed, watched the whole thing. Yeah. Because I was interested. I wanted to see how it played out. How? Yeah. What was the backstage vibe? The commentators? Yeah. How were they re re interacting with each other? Because they weren't a lot of sitting next to each other. Yeah. They were. They were spread out. You know, kind of, and it was funny because DC was saying, oh, well, DC's talking about the fight. And now you're a fighter, you can hear everything. You can hear everything. his corner, you can hear yes. the commentators, you can hear the people around the cage talking because it's so silent. No, it's crazy. How does that, how does that play in your head? What is the mentality behind it? Listen, hats off to every one of those dudes.
You, yeah. I got, you've got respect from, no matter what your result was, you got respect from me for putting your hand up and coming out and uh, being brave for, for people. It's exactly like what Tony said, we do it for the people. And, and I mean, as you say, a lot of the fighters draw on that crowd energy, on that uh, vibe, you know, that gives them that extra bit of uh, adrenaline. But before we wrap up, we've got another UFC event coming up right around the corner, Wednesday, fight night, uh, Anthony Smith against Glover Texera. I mean, that's, that's a, that could be very, very interesting because anything can happen there. Anything. Well, the lightweight division has all of a sudden become a lot more interesting with uh, old Jones putting himself in a predicament again. Mm. I think there's going to come a time where the UFC is going to lose their patience and they're going to be like, you can't keep yourself out of trouble. You're not be bad for business, you know, step aside. Yeah. Um, and that puts those three animals, the Santos, um, Smith, and what's the other guy, the guy that just fought him? Um, but yeah, that's happening. Well, I, I suppose it's three. No, so listen, that, that fight is uh, that fight yeah, really good fight. I, I, I just, I just think, look, Tixeri is uh, uh, he's, he, he's he's becoming he's had he's had a few fights. I think yeah. it's time to kind of look. Uh, although he's still fighting number three ranked guy in the world, so you can't look at him and go okay you're old you must step aside son you're still a top 10 anyway he's got a point to prove i suppose maybe he's trying to say like listen i've got mileage but this is not the end of the road well listen if he hits you you're gonna know all about it he's still got super power in his hands and can uh, be incredibly destructive no it's gonna be very interesting but i mean so and uh, look i like smith i think he's a he's a he's he's a good cat yeah um he's definitely uh, uh, got some, some some top skills. Um, he really he really is uh, a guy. He's fought a lot. He's just got a lot of experience. And and it was funny because uh, DC was saying the same thing. I, he thinks that we actually haven't seen the best of him yet. He's still a young guy. He's been fighting for for since he was I don't know probably fourteen or something ridiculous like that. Yeah. Um, but and I think he's only really starting to find himself now. Uh, it's actually, I mean, I've enjoyed him as an analyst. They've used him as an analyst to break down fights. I think he's a smart dude. Um, but as you say, he's he's the type of guy that believes that he's still got a lot to give the sport. And I mean, if you look at uh, Anthony Smith now, you're ranked number three, the Lionheart. I mean. He's also, I mean, to go against John Jones, yes, okay, maybe he was schooled in that. But, I mean, 31-14-0. and 0, I mean, jeepers. That's, that's an yeah, insane listen, record. He, yeah, he's had a massive amount of fights. I mean, the, uh, that other guy that I was talking about is Dominic uh, Reyes. So oh, that's I'm right. Yeah, 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 Reyes, yeah. And Reyes, listen, Reyes, also just incredible striker. And against Jones, looked a serious, serious Serious, serious guy. Uh, yeah. Are we going to see Jones again? What's going to be the issue with that? And then how does that light heavyweight division play out? So those guys are uh, all going to put their hand up. I think a good win for Smith all of a sudden saying, hey, listen, I'm yeah. also within the shark here for a title shot. Uh, so it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting to see what uh, what happens there. I think the light heavyweight division t- looks amazing. The heavyweight division looks Sorry. amazing. Uh, middleweight division... Looks amazing. It's all stacked. Uh, lightweight, welterweight. Stacked. So, yeah, they, they're in a very good space, uh, the UFC. They really are. All right. We're going to have to leave it there, Gareth McKellen. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, of course, this is MMA Uncaged in quarantine and self-isolation. Um, we'll be uh, bring you another one uh, next week. So if you like, uh, please hit the like button, subscribe on YouTube. We'll also make this available on iTunes, on podcast. And um, yeah, follow uh, Gareth Soldier Boy McLean on Instagram. What's your handle again? Uh, at Soldier Boy Inc. <laughs> at Soldier Boy Inc. At Soldier Boy Inc. At Soldier Boy Inc. <laughs> at Soldier Boy Inc. <laughs> give it a like, give it a follow. Thanks very much for your time. It's been MMA. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, super cool, man. Good we'll chance. We'll see you guys soon. Let's go. Yeah. yeah, you know that this one.
Myself, they call me J-O, A to the easy E-N yeah. huh. Know that we undefeated, y'all are beneath them speeds Just trying to air a grievance But his lines are overhead, better check the air for clearance Call the tower, this is our credit He the air apparent, uh-huh Really, I've never been better yeah. Legacy, this is forever huh. All the more times I've been seven I'm raising the bar, you can go ahead and measure yeah. Think about time for a toast yeah. Time that we welcome to go yeah. Yo, we're just leaving it, no yeah. Yeah. This right here for 